Good morning. In this lesson, we will talk about uh, the Dublin principle. What, what are the Dublin principle for uh, um, industrial heritage? Um, are um, a document after the Nisnitail Charter in uh, 2003 that uh, ECOMOS, the International Council of Monuments and Size, um, wrote uh, in 2011 um, to uh, um, extend the, the principle that uh, um, um, the, the teachers wrote uh, in the Nijinsail Charter. So, uh, on the 28th of November 2011, the ECOMOS, an international organization for the conservation, protection, and enhancement of monuments and sites of cultural interest, together with TCIC, the International Committee for the Conservation of the Industrial Heritage during the World Assembly, drew up the Dublin Principles for the Conservation of Industrial Heritage. The text represents the application of the principles set out in the Nijitai Charter and aim is the application for a global standard recognized by all cultural actors, uh, like for example, museums, institutions, operators, cultural operator, operators who recognize the same theme in ECOMOS. Um, Let's read together uh, some uh, um, some parts uh, of uh, this document, um, acknowledging the particular nature of an industrial heritage, the issues and threats affecting it as a result of its relation to the contemporary economic, legal, cultural, and environmental contexts. ECOMOS and Ticic wish to expand their cooperation by adopting and uh, promoting the dissemination and use of the following principle to assist in the documentation, protection, conservation, and appreciation of industrial heritage as part, uh, that is very important, as part of the heritage of human societies around the world. So in 2011, the industrial heritage is a part of the uh, uh, heritage of the human societies at all. There is in this document a new definition of industrial heritage that consists of the remains of industrial culture. So the industrial culture is uh, issues very important, which are of historical, technological, social, architectural or scientific value. These remains consist of buildings and machinery, workshops, mills and factory, mines and sites for processing or refining warehouses and stores, places where energy is generating. This part is the same part uh, that uh, uh, we can read also in Nijitail Charter, transmitted and used, transport and all its infrastructure, infrastructure as well as places they use for social activities related to industry, such as housing, religious, worship or education. And then, uh, the risk of industrial heritages is present uh, on, um, in uh, this document. So, uh, the industrial heritage is highly vulnerable and often at, at risk, often lost for lack of awareness documentation, recognition or protection, but also because of changing economic trends, negative perceptions, environmental issues, or its sheer size and complexity. So the industrial heritage is at risk. This is the reality. And uh, yet, uh, conservation of the built industrial heritage can contribute to achieving the goals of a sustainable development of uh, at uh, the local, national, and international levels. Um, the legal measures is uh, also important to underline because uh, appropriated policies, legal and administrative measures need to be adopted 
and implemented to protect and ensure the conservation of industrial heritage sites and uh, structures. Um, so this is uh, uh, an, another important fact. So uh, also uh, the law of uh, the single countries in Europe, for example, in the world, would, um, would uh, protect uh, uh, the um, industrial heritage like uh, the other heritage. Um, in this document, uh, um, an another important part is about the alternative use of industrial heritage um, like for example architectures and uh, uh, factory so appropriate original or alternative and adaptive use is the most frequent way and often the most sustainable way to of ensuring the conservation of industrial heritage sites or structures and the new use, uh, uses should respect the significant materials components and patterns of the circulation and activity um, and then uh, building codes, risk mitigation requirements, environmental or in, in uh, industrial regulations and other standards should be implemented in, in an adaptive way to take heritage dimension into account when they are enforced through physical interventions. So risk mitigation requirements um, are uh, underlined also in this document. But uh, finally, what is industrial heritage? Not only architectures, so infrastructures, infrastructure, but also uh, archives, machines, work, tools of work, people, memories, history of people, and uh, and other intangible access uh, with uh, um, also uh, the tangible uh, aspect uh, too. So these are uh, uh, the um, real meaning of uh, uh, our lessons uh, that in every industrial heritage coexist these two manifestations of identity and, and history to preserve and to um, uh, preserve about also uh, possible um, risks. So tangible and intangible aspects are to underlined and to mitigate it um, from the risk. Thank you everybody for uh, this, for your attention and uh, we will attend you for the third topic about European legislation, legislation about industrial heritage.